All right, so uh, moving on with our unit on similarity, um, we are now in lesson six and we're on page 41. Uh, and what we're going to do now is transition our idea of similarity specifically to triangles. Uh, and what we're going to talk about today um, are three different parts of standard 13. All right, and that's I can show the triangles are similar by side, side, side for similarity, side, angle, side for similarity, and angle, angle for similarity. So basically these are going to be shortcuts. So when we think about the definition of similarity, when we worked with figures, we said we had to have all the corresponding angles congruent and all corresponding sides had to be proportional. Well, with triangles, we have some shortcuts where we don't necessarily have to show all of that information. And that's what we're going to get to. But before we get to triangles, let's go ahead and revisit similarity for figures. So why don't you pause the video, all right, and determine if these three pairs of figures are similar. And then flip it back on and we'll see how you do. All right, so let's see how you did. So notice we can check the angles pretty quickly um, in our first um, pair of trapezoids here. We can see that all the corresponding angles, all right, match and are congruent, so that's good. So now the next thing we need to do is um, check that um, that the sides are all proportional. And when I look at my proportions, and once again, I get in the habit of just writing everything from smallest to biggest, just to make sure I match everything up. And when I do so, I do get that everything reduces to the same scale factor of one to six. So this is six times as big as that. So these two figures are in fact similar. All right, now, once again, this is really easy because all four angles are right angles here. All four angles here are right angles. So those corresponding angles are all congruent. But notice what happens when I look at my ratio of sides, right? The first two look really good, but then when I get to my second two, I do not have the same proportion here, right? I do not have the same scale factor. So these figures, all right, these two rectangles are not similar. All right, and then my final example here, all right, when I look at this, all right, and reduce these, and then let me do 98 divided by 35 on my calculator here, I get 2.8. I'm just jumping right to the decimal here, 168 divided by 60. That's 2.8, and 182, oh, I mistyped, divided by 65, that's also 2.8. So we can see that the sides are proportional, but notice we don't have any information about angles for these triangles. So if we were working by the definition of similar figures, which is what we were doing before, we'd say, nope, I don't have enough information. I don't know about corresponding angles. But today, this is actually an example of side, 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 for similarity. Today, you will know, oh, sorry about that, hit my camera uh, with my pen. Um, you will now know that, hey, if this happens, four triangles, and remember, this is a shortcut for triangles, right? Two triangles, so very specific here. If all the sides are proportional, we can, in fact, say that the triangles are similar. So that's gonna be the difference between working with triangles and working with figures, all right? Now, we're not diving into the reasoning behind this yet, all right, but, all right, trust me that it'll work. Okay, all right, so now we're going to talk about those three shortcuts. So let's talk about angle, angle, all right, for similarity. So what this says is if you can show any two congruent angles. So in this case, we know angle R is congruent to angle L, and we know angle S is congruent to angle M. Then we know that these two triangles are similar. So triangle SRT is similar to triangle MLP. All right, and that's our similarity statement. All right, okay, our similarity symbol, I should say. And then remember, we, when we write our, our, our similarity statement here, we have to be in the same order, so parts have to match. So notice S and M correspond, so S and M are the first two letters here. R and L correspond, they match. T and P match. All right, now the order for, does not matter. Okay, I could have written RTS, but if I had written RTS, my second triangle would have had to be LPL. All right, so all that matters is that the corresponding parts are in the same position when we write that similarity statement. So that's the first shortcut. So any two angles, two, excuse me, let me say that again. Any two pairs of corresponding angles congruent means that those two triangles are similar. Now the next shortcut is side, angle, side for similarity. Now side, angle, side. Now when we say this, all right, it is in order. So side would be AB, angle A, and then side AC. All right, so it is the two sides and the angle that joins those sides. All right, so it's not like side, angle, and then side down here. So they are consecutive, all right, as we label them. So side, angle, side, so side, angle, side. 
Okay, now what that means is the sides have to be proportional. So AB to QR has to equal to AC to QS. And that included angle, we say included, that's the angle that is formed between the corresponding sides, also have to be congruent. So you have to have two pieces of information, right? The angle in the middle, all right, has to be congruent. And then the sides that form that angle have to be proportional. Then, once again, we can say that the triangles, all right, BCA is similar to triangle RSQ, all right? So order does matter, all right? So when we say side, angle, side, that matters. So it could be side, angle, side, side, angle, side, all right? Okay, and any time that happened, the two triangles are similar. And our final one is what we saw in the opener up here, which is side, 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 which says that if all the sides are proportional, right? So if AB to QR is equal to AC to QS, which is equal to BC to R. S, right? If all the sides are proportional, then once again, we can say that those triangles are similar. R, S, Q. All right, so notice this just cuts down on the amount of information we have to find and show, all right, to show that triangles are similar. Now, remember, this is applying only to triangles. All right, so these shortcuts are for similarity in triangles only. If we're dealing with other figures, all right, we have to use the entire definition of similarity. So we have to show all the sides proportional and all the corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so let's go ahead and flip um, to page 42 here. And what I want to do is just go through a handful of examples with you and show you how we use this. So if we go for our first example here at the top of page 42 here, are these triangles similar? And how do you know? And if so, write the similarity statement and find the scale factor. All right, so notice when we think about our shortcuts, all right, we have to know certain information. All right, and this is what's kind of nice because when I flip back over here, notice if I don't know any information about the sides, I have to use angle-angle. That's my only choice. If I have one angle, right, I can only use side-angle-side. Side. If I know no angle information, I have to use side-side-side. So the information that you see within the problem is going to usually give you a pretty big hint about which of the shortcuts you want to use. So when I look at my figure over here, Notice I have information, if I look at this triangle here, and what I'm going to do is just rewrite this triangle, or redraw this triangle, so we can see it here. So I have K, L, P, and I have 8 and 12. And then I'm going to redraw the big triangle here, like this, and that is K, M, N. Now notice to get K, M, I have to add here, right? So 8 plus 2, so this is 10. And then KN here is 12 plus 3, which is 15. And I recommend kind of redrawing your figures because it's going to help you. So when I look at this, I have side information about two pairs of sides, not three. So that leads me to think I'm going to have to use side angle side. Now, if it's going to be side angle side, I also have to know the side in, or excuse me, the angle between the sides is congruent. Well, notice in both these figures, they both share angle K. And we know if they share that angle, that angle is going to be equal to itself. And so by redrawing this, I can see that, yes, I'm going to use similarity shortcut side angle side if I'm going to show that these two things are, these two triangles are similar. Now, I've got the included angle. Now, I have to remember that the sides have to be proportional as well. So I'm going to write out 8 and 12. That has to match to 10 and 15. And if I reduce that, this is 4 to 5, and this is 4 to 5. So my corresponding sides are proportional. The included angle is congruent, right? Angle K is congruent to angle K. Therefore, yes, these triangles are similar. So we know that it's yes, and we know it's by side, angle, side for similarity. And then I, once again, am just going to write my similarity statement. I'm just going to go LKP. And that would translate to MKN over here. And that is our similarity statement. All right, so there you go. First example on how we use that shortcut. All right, so let's jump down to our practice problems here. Now notice on angle one, or excuse me, on problem one here, we have two triangles. And notice we know no information about angles right now, but we know all three sides. So this lends me to think, okay, well, I'm gonna use side, side, side. So what I want to do now is write them out and see if all three sides 
um, are proportional. So once again, I'm going to go 6, 6, 9, and once again, I just try to get in the habit of writing everything in order here. And that would have to correspond to the 8, 8, and 12. And then notice if I reduce this, this is 3 fourths, this is 3 fourths, and this is 3 fourths. So all three sides are, okay, proportional. So they are similar. And my shortcut is side, side, side. All right. And my similarity statement. Once again, I'm just going to match everything here. All right. And I'm going to go A, B, C here. And so I'm going to go F, E, G here. Now, this is a little bit different because since we have two equal sides, there's multiple ways to write this. All right. So technically, if I go A, B, C, right, um, and I go E, F, G, that would be right. If I go F, E, G, that would also be right because those sides are the same. Scale factor. Oh, I forgot to do that in the problem before. So let's look at that. So my scale factor is, all right, the proportion. So that would be 3 to 4. All right. Okay, so if they are proportional, what you reduce it to would be your scale factor. So when I go back up here, my scale factor would have been 4 to 5. So I forgot to do that. I got so excited. All right. So now, all right, once again, I'm going to skip two because that was a lot like. Uh, what we just did, and so now let's flip the page. Um, this is a lot like the problem we just did up here. So let's flip to page 43, and let's look at problem three. Now, once again, you're going to have to recall some information from prior units, all right? Uh, maybe to find some angle relationships that could be parallel lines. That, should, that could be vertical angles, right? So make sure that you're kind of thinking about those types of things as you're working. So, for example, in problem three here, all right, notice I know nothing about the sides. There is no side information at all which means my only choice is possibly angle-angle. Well, we have this set of angles, right? Both are 45, so we know those are equal. So here's where we have to fall back on that prerequisite knowledge, because now notice, I can get angle 1 and 2 here to be congruent because they are vertical angles. All right, okay? So we know that those two angles are congruent. So notice, yes, they are similar, and it's by angle-angle, all right? And my similarity statement, all right, I'm going to go RSW in the first triangle, and that would be similar to, now R corresponds to V, so then VSB right there. All right, okay, so let's do one more together. Let's do go through number four here. So once again, all right, oh, notice on the scale factor here, I can't do the scale factor because I have no side information. All right, so that's what we mean by put the scale factor if you can. All right, let's look at number four here. Okay, now once again, another idea of prerequisite knowledge. So when I look here, I've got 76 and 55, okay, and then I've got 77 and 54. It looks like I don't have two pairs of congruent angles. But let's go ahead and double check because here's what we should know, that all three angles in a triangle should add up to be 180 degrees every time. So just to be sure, don't let things be a mystery. Find those missing pieces and verify and make sure. So 180 minus 76 and minus 55 means that this top angle up here is 49. All right, and then down to here, 180 minus 77 minus 54, that is equal to 49. All right, so notice we do end up with one pair of congruent angles, right? But I don't have another pair of congruent angles, and I had no, no information, all right, about my sides. So what, these, what this means is that these triangles are not similar. All right, so there you go, and you got plenty of work, all right, to go through here. All right, go through and check your work in the answer key once you're done, and I will see you next time.